What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus guide for you on how to get your very first exotics in Icarus. This is kind of geared towards newer players, so we're going to show you how to do this with limited or no workshop gear and a lower level character. Let's get into it, shall we? So we're going to be doing deep vein extraction and to get to deep vein extraction, what you're going to do is go over to new and go to missions. You're going to choose Olympus and then you're going to have deep vein extraction down over here. Deep vein extraction is locked behind beachhead recon. You have to complete beachhead, live wire terrain scan, and then ice storm expedition. And then you can get to deep vein extraction. They think they've got a lead on some exotics. So the goal of this mission is to drop down and find an exotic deposit, mine four static exotic nodes, upload them to the orbital exchange interface, and then upload yourself. This mission can be done on easy, medium, hard, and hardcore, but I highly suggest doing this on easy if you're new to the game. If you're not, medium's more than sufficient enough. You can also do this mission on hard and hardcore, but remember if you're using hardcore and you don't have anybody to res you, you can't get your gear back, and you do have a chance of losing your gear if you can't get a res and was to go down. We're going to hit claim prospect, and as far as your loadout goes, you can do this, guys, with nothing. Thing, as long as you know an iron pickaxe and how to get an iron pickaxe and make it and the reason why is because iron pickaxe or mxc pickaxe are the lowest tiers that you can use on an exotics node and still get 60 to 64 exotics per run doing this so i highly suggest at least using a pickaxe the pickaxe costs only 100 ren to make and research and can be found in the workshop i also bring a knife and an axe you don't have to bring an axe you can make a stone axe quite easily on the surface Surface, but it's up to you to bring an axe or not but at least bring a pickaxe if you can if not make an iron one on the surface one thing it'd be silly for me not to mention is that there is a Cenotai drop ship recall beacon this was researched for 250 exotics and 25 ren and it does take a little bit of exotics to unlock this but once you unlock this 25 ren is not a lot of ren to actually use to be able to get your drop pod back especially if you're doing this run multiple times you wouldn't have to escape through the arctic you could just throw your pod beacon down and get your drop pod it makes it so much faster to do this Mission. So keep that in mind after you've done quite a few runs, you start getting a little bit of exotics and Ren stored up, you might want to research this and use it. Of course, all the MXC gear is 75 Ren to research, 25 to craft, and of course that includes the knife. If you're not entirely comfortable with doing this or having problems with it, maybe consider insurance if you want to get your gear back. It does reduce your reward by 33% in total and makes your reward less. So you get less Ren doing so, but you'll still get the same amount of exotics. Of course, you could just use no gear and try to do it without gear. Just make sure you research the iron pickaxe. And with that said, let's talk what you have to have unlocked to do this mission. So you have to be at least level 10. And the reason why is because you have to have a crafting bench to craft the orbital exchange interface the orbital exchange interface is used for you to upload exotics so what it does is it drops down a beacon so you can put your exotics in and then upload those so you can get credit so you have to have the crafting bench at least unlocked and enough points to unlock the short range radio and of course the orbital exchange interface and of course this is crafted for 10 wood eight rope seven iron ignits and seven copper ignits you also will need a anvil and an iron pickaxe if you're not dropping with workshop gear and you can unlock as many iron tools and weapons that you want or can i'd also suggest a water skin water skins are great and you can store some water with that there are caves around in this mission so you're really not 100 percent away from water during this mission but you can have a water skin and know for a fact that you have water so and of course a longbow and flint arrows that's a good thing to unlock as well as you can see we're on our level 17 character here so we're going to be doing this with a lower level character to kind of emulate us doing this for the first time so we've got our loadout here we're going to go ahead and drop down with the pickaxe a knife and a axe and we're going to drop down with the recall beacon just for demonstration purposes we're actually not going to use it and confirm our loadout and drop down Nothing could stop them. So once you drop down, go ahead and start grabbing you some stuff like fiber sticks, all that good stuff. Also, if you drop down with some drop down gear, don't forget to also take that from your drop ship. Your first objective is to find food and food buffs. Find you several food buffs. If you didn't drop down with uh, basic tools, make you some basic tools so that you can harvest. Usually get everything I need to fully survive if I need to. 
Grab you some berries. Grab you some oxide as well. So you can breathe. And you'll just chuck that into your oxygen slot. I'd like to grab me a little bit of stone and make me a stone pickaxe as well. Because if you try to use this MXC pickaxe all the way through, you might break it before you get all the exotics. You want to make sure the MXC pickaxe is the only thing that harvests your exotics. Usually what I'll do is get enough stone to get me a stone pickaxe. Use a stone pickaxe on most things. Also going to make me a torch and a wood hammer. Wood hammer is going to be for later for repairing if we need it in the Arctic biome. And of course, a campfire. We're also going to need a full set of cloth armor. You don't need it, but I would highly suggest a cloth armor set. And the reason why is because the cloth armor set, as you can see, will give you some cold and heat resistance. And also will give you a plus 5% movement speed buff, which will help you in the end. So we're just going around picking up buff foods and whatever we want to eat and bring into the Arctic with us. We're going to grab us a little more oxite. Usually try to keep a stack in my inventory and a stack in my bar or in my slot. And just remember, if you're doing this mission quite often, all the buff foods and whatnot are static. So if you find it in this one place before, you could come back and find it again. So that means if you do this mission again, you can go ahead and come back and get these watermelons. They're located right here next to the lake. If you look at the lake on the map, there's buff foods all around this lake right here. So all you have to do is go around here, find you buff foods, get you some basic materials. And then what I usually like to do is head straight to K13 and set up in this cave right here on the edge of it. And we'll show you that here soon. So we're going to go ahead and head towards K13 towards the middle there, where you can see the mountainside on the side of the map there. Also, if you find any wolves or anything on the on the way there, don't forget to go ahead and harvest them. You're going to need the fur, at least 20, to make you a bed to sleep. Usually what I like to do is I like to head to this cave and get prepared, make the orbital exchange interface on the first day, and then on the second day, as soon as I sleep, go and go into the Arctic. Don't forget, while you're doing this mission, you can jump to kind of regen stamina while you're going down a hill. So we're right here at K13 towards the middle, and you're going to come up to this cave right here. And you'll see that there's a cave on the side of this mountain. So this is where we're going to go ahead and set up and get our iron and copper and go ahead and make a crafting bench, a furnace, and go ahead and smelt the iron and copper we need, make the rope, and everything else to make the orbital exchange interface. So we're going to chop some wood down to get all the materials we need. Don't forget to harvest you enough wood to make you four wooden walls and two wooden ceilings at least. So we got enough materials. We're going to go ahead and make us a crafting bench. Also made a torch. We're going to go ahead and put that in our slot there. Turn it on and come in here and stab stab some worms. Now just go in a little bit. You don't want to go in and aggro them all. But yeah, just come up here, stab you a few worms in the face. Should be fine. And all we need is just the first few iron in here, honestly. If you need to kill a few more worms, go in there and kill you a few more worms. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some iron here. You need about 14 iron and about 14 copper. And trust me, you don't want to stay in here too long either. You could drink from this cave here as well. There's water here as well. You need to go out and reset your cave debuff and come back in. You do not want to get pneumonia while you're in this cave. So we crafted our crafting bench. We're going to go ahead and place that. And we're going to make our eight rope. All you need is fiber to make that. We're going to need some leather and some stone to make our stone furnace. If you see any watermelons out and about, go ahead and pick those up. Once you eat a watermelon, it gives you a ton of water, too. If you take about three or four watermelons up into the Arctic, you'll never need a water skin. Nice. The wolf. There's two wolves. Say it's not so. Now that we've got some leather, we can go ahead and make us a furnace. Go ahead and make us a bow, too. And we're going to go ahead and drop our furnace here and smelt our iron and copper. Got a little extra uh, leather, so I'm going to go ahead and make me some flint arrows. So we got seven copper and seven iron. We're going to go ahead and make our orbital exchange interface and put that in our inventory. So just take your time, keep your marker at the cave, and head back to the cave once it starts getting dark. But make sure you have enough to make you a sleeping bag so you can go ahead and sleep till day so after you've taken your first day and crafted most of these items here then you should be ready to go up to the arctic so we're going to explain what we're going to bring we're going to bring a torch usually you take a torch and leave the torch on in the arctic it actually will boost your heat just a little bit we're going to take a full set of cloth armor with the five percent movement speed on that 
Take whatever foods you want to survive and either a water skin or some watermelons. We're going to take some watermelons this time. And of course, some spare oxide. The Arbiter Exchange interface. So we crafted that here in the crafting bench. You have to have at least an MXC pickaxe or an iron pickaxe. If you use a stone pickaxe, you'll get less. You have to have a wood hammer. And the reason why is because so you can repair your wooden structure. If you need to use your wooden structure for any reason and need to repair it to pick it back up and take it with you, you'll need a wood repair hammer. If you get into something like a snowstorm or something, like that and need to destroy the roof to reset it keep it from falling in uh, you may need to repair it as well before you take the roof down and also a door door is a good idea uh, so you don't get trapped into a one by one death box if you were to light it on fire by accident you'd have to destroy the walls to get out sticks fiber and wood wood for fire you can also use coal if you want and of course a campfire or any kind of fire uh, the optional items that i bring is of course my knife a bow and some arrows i'm using a long bow and some flint arrows just whatever i had left over on the iron and i'm also bringing my sanitized drop recall beacon so we're going to go ahead and equip all this item get it into our inventory and we're going to go ahead and sleep and then as soon as we sleep we're going to go straight into the arctic and we just slipped so we're going to go ahead and head up there so i'm going to go ahead and take a drink real quick just to refresh my water and I'm going to head out of this cave and we're going to head to the bottom of K13. And once you get here to the bottom of K13, be very careful as this starts polar bear country. And you want to be very careful not to aggro the polar bears and make them mad. So what we're doing is we're heading into the Arctic biome and we're heading towards the side of O13 over here. We have to go all the way through the Arctic here to get to 013 to get to our first exotic node that unlocks the other three exotic nodes four in total up in here be very very careful as there are polar bears so be very careful with the polar bears that are over in this zone here as you see as soon as we get into the arctic we're getting a cold debuff don't forget that we have to reset that every five minutes after five minutes, there's a chance for you to get hypothermia. So if you look at the very top of your screen, you can see your mission timer. You can use that to judge five minutes. So at 23.10, we'll say, we need to reset our cold debuff. And we're just going to continue jumping down this hill. Jumping down this hill will actually regenerate some of your stamina and let you go further and longer. Of course, avoiding polar bears the whole time if you do happen to get close to a polar bear go behind it it can't see you as well when you're behind it. of course use stealth but try your best to avoid them as you can see we had little yellow bars above our animals and the reason why that is is because of health bars as you can see in our multiplayer one we have it in health bars and in solo it's actually called health monitor and that lets you see bars on your screen which is quite useful for whenever you see polar bears. Say if you were running through here and you didn't see that polar bear. The health bars helps quite a bit. So once you get to M14 here, you want to go through this little kind of, uh, if you see there's like a ledge here, there's a huge cliff here. Be very careful to go like towards the middle. Or if you see that little plateau sticking out there, kind of go close to it. Right here is that cliff and you can fall and break your legs. So be very careful not to do so. You also want to stay away from mammoths. Anything you see out here, just kind of stay away from it. You don't want to get destroyed by a mammoth or a polar bear. And we're also getting to our first crevasse here. And if you need to, you can actually use this for shelter in a winter storm. And it's kind of located, the first one is kind of located around N14, N15. And if you pretend this continues out this way, you'll see that it, this is the crevasse right here. You can actually use that for shelter if you need, if you need to. And here's another one as well. You can actually use that as well to de-aggro polar bears or get away from polar bears or whatever you need to do. You can use your environment to kind of counter polar bears if you were to aggro one. Also, it is kind of cheesy, but if you were to aggro a polar bear, you can also hit the unstuck button and it'll send you somewhere far away from the polar bear, which may de-aggro the polar bear or put you into a new one. The risks you take. So we're going to go ahead, just for safety measures, go ahead and reset our debuff here. As long as it's not storming, you should be able to bring up a campfire, sit next to it as you see our debuff dropped off. And just pick up the fire again. And now it's reset. 
so we're coming up on the first cave here and this is where you actually spawn the exotics and sometimes this is open and sometimes you have to dig into it and be careful as there is sometimes a polar bear that likes to camp the entrance of this as well but you're going to go in here and if you see any cave worms you're just going to stab them in the face real quick try not to hit the water if you can there's no one could take him out you can also use your bow and arrows if you have a bow and arrows. And your first objective is to go ahead and farm this exotic. Use your MXE pickaxe or iron pickaxe or better and farm it. That, my friend, is exotics. Alrighty. No, a little more than that, though. So we're going to go ahead and head out of the cave. And as soon as we head out of the cave, we're going to head southwest. And we're going to head back the direction we just came. And the reason why is because we're going to go ahead and find three more static nodes and farm them. So we're going to head down to this very first crevice or crevasse that you see here. And we're going to head into it. And it's located right here at the edge of 013. This is the second exotic node. Heading to this crevasse. And about towards the middle, you'll see the next exotic. Go ahead and farm that exotic node. And then we're just going to head east after that one's done and get out of this ravine. You can jump on the very end of this. Just jump twice or once. Then you're going to head directly west and you're going to notice that there is an exotic up in the hill over there. Right there. We're going to head straight towards that exotic. To the left or right of it, you can go ahead and just walk up this wall. You have to jump up the top, like so. And then farm your third exotic. And this is located right here at the very bottom of 013 and the top of 014. And it's at the ridge, at the very tip of the ridge right here on the map. And I like to go ahead and reset my cold debuff right here. And while you're next to the fire, you can go ahead and eat your watermelon or drink your water. Pro tip, watermelons actually give you water, but they don't give you a reduction to your temperature. So that debuff's gone. We'll go ahead and reset that. We're going to pick this back up. And we're going to head directly east from here. And go over towards that corner over there. And you'll notice there's kind of like a hole in the ground here. Go into this hole and down to the right. You will find your final exotic of the evening. And this exotic is located in the very corner of 013. If you hit this black and white marker right here, you can see it's like in a pit right here. It's in the very center of that pit. And that's it. So what I like to do from here is go ahead and just place my orbital exchange interface request it and then you can just leave this here you don't need this no more we're gonna go and find where our exotics are which is right over there it seems like whenever i drop it there it's always in the same location which isn't too far at all put our exotics in the drop pod that is dropped for the orbital exchange interface put our 64 exotics in there and deliver it to the station And as you see, we got 150 Ren. You keep this up, you'll do well with them. And 64 exotics. So now the only thing that's left to do is to go back out of the Arctic. You probably want to do it before it gets dark. So go ahead and start heading back out to the Arctic. You can set your way marker here at K13. That's usually what I do. Or if you have your dropship recall beacon, go ahead and drop that. And you can go ahead and drop your drop pod, like, right here. As you can see, it will save you a lot of time getting out of here. But we're going to go ahead and head out of the Arctic. Just to let you know, also, there is caves located in the Arctic. You can either use IcarusIntel.com and figure out where those are. There's one right here, one right here, some down in here, and then some down in here as well. If you ever need to use a cave and don't want to use a wooden shelter, you could do that as well. As long as you walk behind polar bears, you're just fine. 
just be careful. If he turned around, he would aggro us right now. But just try to walk behind him the best you can. So then once you get back to your drop pod, all you're going to do is go ahead and upload to complete and return back to the space station. Now also keep in mind that that's not the only way to get exotics. Later on in the game, you'll notice that some missions will have exotic rewards. For example, like migrating sand survey. We actually have a guide on this later on. If you're interested in our videos, you can also do extracting like on spirit walk exploration and use an extractor and radar to extract exotics with the mission payday extraction being one of the premier missions to complete as well to unlock the workshop radar extractor but it's a great mission to complete if you're just now starting to get exotics so get you those exotics and the gear that you want and that's it for this video don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to the channel subscribing to the channel will get you weekly icarus update videos and guides just like this one we also have a discord if you're interested in the description down below join our discord there's lots of veteran players there that love to answer any of your icarus questions and also post any kind of Icarus questions in the comments down below, guys. Also, if anything changes on this video, we'll post it in the description or comments down below. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.